I want to bring in, in Los Angeles, California, forensic psychiatrist, trial expert witness, columnist of Inside the Criminal Mind, Dr. Carol Lieberman. So glad you're with us here tonight. Big, big day here at Court TV. Huge night in, in this case. Um, let's start with this accused killer. Again, presumed innocent, we know that. But any observations that you made of, of him, his demeanor in the courtroom, are you taking anything away from that? Yes. Um, you know, if you start with how he was when he walked into the courthouse in Pennsylvania, he, he had a very defiant, you know, he always has this uh, expression, like expressionless face, but he, ha he was very defiant when he walked into that courthouse. He had a defiant look and even in his mugshot and so on. Um, he's different now. He was different in the court. Um, he still, you know, doesn't show much expression, but he isn't defiant. He's more, he's trying, it seems like he's trying to show that he's got everything under control. And clearly he must not feel that, but um, but he like wants, almost wants to play lawyer, you know, that he's yes, uh, judge, you know, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, or whatever. Um, you know, You know what I'm saying? That it's not, here's someone who's facing uh, the death, well, the death penalty or life, and, and he's trying to show that he's not perturbed by that, that, you know, this, uh, perhaps going along with what he said in, in Pennsylvania, I'm going to prove that it wasn't me. Yeah, I, I had, there was none of that deer in the headlight kind of uh, demeanor. There was almost, and the way he walked in, almost a little bit of a swagger to him mm -hmm. absolutely surprised me. Um, as you mentioned, because this is a capital case. It's the biggest case in the nation right now. He knows everyone is watching him. He knows there's a, a, a very good chance they could seek the death penalty here. Now, I want to flip the, the coin over. Um, Kaylee's family was there in the, in the front row. Chanley described their demeanor inside the courtroom. What do you think it's like for them? And how important do you think it is for a victim's family like this to be there? to be inside that courtroom and, and to have those moments after such a devastating loss. Yes, it is extremely important to be able to look that person eye. In fact, um, Kaylee's father talked about that. I can't, I want to look him in the eye, you know. Um, you know, he must be having all kinds of emotions because uh, we now know from the pings of from the cell phone and so on, uh, and he said also that he, he hasn't said yet what the connection is, but he said that um, he has recognized, you know, it was like a, a light bulb went on, that he sees some kind of connection. Um, to Brian Koberger. So he must be feeling, and plus he tried telling the police that she had a stalker and they wouldn't listen to him. So he must be um, feeling all kinds of different upsetting emotions. All right, uh, Dr. Carol Lieberman's gonna stay with us. Um, we're gonna bring in Dr. Carol Lieberman. I only have 30 seconds for you, but I saved you for last. Your thoughts about okay, okay. Dylan, go yes, ahead. That is, the, that is the most intriguing part of this whole affidavit. Um, and it, the fact that she opened the door three times and um, she didn't get concerned enough about her roommates to, to call 911 right then. I mean, she heard someone's, someone, there's someone here, someone's crying, um, you know, all of this. And, and yet she went back to sleep. And, and didn't call 911 until the next day. That That is very um, strange and um, very upsetting that someone would do that. Yeah, it's the unexplained part of all this. You've got a lot in this affidavit, but we don't have everything. And I don't know her, her, her frame of mind, uh, but I'm sure we are gonna find out because she will be a key witness at this case. All right, expert. What do you think's going through his mind if this evidence is correct, he's presumed innocent. When he returns to the scene of a quadruple murder the next morning, and there's no police cars, there's no crime scene tape, there's no ambulance, there's nothing, like nothing happened. Yes, well, first of all, uh, you know, as you know, I think I've been saying from the very beginning that he's an incel, and all the things we've been finding out since then go along with that, like his stalking of the victims and so on, his choice of the victims and all of that. So incels like to be known for when they kill people or when they have a conquest like this. And so I think in part he was disappointed that um, that there wasn't a, the police presence and so on. You know, he's, he's con conflicted. On the one hand, he wanted to commit the perfect 
crime and not be caught. But on the other hand, he did want to be caught and, and be proud in a sense of what he did. I know that that sounds sick, but that's that's the mind of an incel. And do you know that the incels have started a campaign to free Brian Koberger? Wow. Wow. All right, folks. Uh, our investigators staying with us. Dr. Carol Lieberman, thank you so much for your help tonight. We'll be speaking a lot about this case in the days ahead.